name. Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi as we celebrate All Souls Day. Please be kind enough to silence your cell phones this evening. And we ask the congregation refrain from singing for the time being and enjoy instead join in singing us in your singing with us in your hearts. Now please stand for the entrance procession. Good evening. Friends, we gather on this uh, feast of all souls to remember, to honor and pray for our loved ones who passed away. Thank you for coming and joining us as we honor our loved ones. I uh, want to also welcome those who are joining us as we live stream this Mass and uh, pray with us that way. And we begin as we always do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And the Lord be with you. As we enter into those sacred mysteries, we take a moment to center ourselves and connect with God. As we turn into God's love, into God's mercy.
You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call us, sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, the maker of all and redeemer of believers, grant to the faithful departed the unsearchable benefits of the passion of your Son, so that on the day of his appearing they may be manifested as your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we turn to Scripture. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if to others indeed they seem punished, yet it is their hope full of immortality, chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their judgment, they shall shine and dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples. And the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth. And the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. The word of the Lord. Me, a banquet of love. 
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If, then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. The word of the Lord. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel, good news according to John. Glory to you, o Lord, God, on my mind, my lips, and in my heart. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again to take you to myself, so that where I am, 
you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Friends, today on November 2nd, the church celebrates this feast of all the faithful departed, also known as the Feast of All Souls. You know, we gather here to celebrate this Eucharist in the special way, remembering our loved ones, those who passed away, those who loved us and cared for us, those truly close to us that are no longer here with us. He went to the other side to be with God. And as we remember, we pray for them, we hope that they enjoy the glory with God in heaven. There are memories, and especially today, it's important that we go back to those wonderful memories. It is important today that we take time to remember those wonderful times together, the lessons, the traditions, the love and care. You know, and uh, I know we continue to grieve, in a sense, the loss of our loved ones is still probably very permanent. You know, it's, it's, it's there. And uh, for some, you know, if uh, that loss happened not that long ago, still very fresh. You know, but today, as we come here to remember and pray, as we come with that grief and loss, you know, we also listen to this beautiful passage where Jesus tells us, do not let your hearts be troubled. I am the way, I am the life. And there is more to it. Death is not the end. Let us remember that. Because, you know, as we gather and pray this Eucharist, we truly believe we connect with one another in a special way. And we connect with our loved ones in a special way. You know, that uh, saying that uh, we are all in this together takes a, a very deeper meaning today, reminding us that even though our loved ones are not present, they still are, and we can still connect, especially through prayer, as we celebrate today. We remember, we pray, we honor, you know, and as we do all of this, I think with this celebration today, we are also invited to look at a deeper meaning of life. This feast as we celebrate today, along with yesterday, as we honored all the saints, encourages us, invites us to really look at life from the, a bigger perspective, realizing there is more to it. That it's not just what we have and experience here. Again, a bigger picture, a deeper meaning. Realizing that it is about loving one another here, but also about reaching the presence of God in heaven after this life. You know, that's something to keep in mind. I know on a daily basis we don't always have a chance to reflect and think about those things. You know, on a daily basis, it's, it's more about what do I need to do today? What do I eat for dinner? 
you know, what do I need to do to prepare for school or work? What are the tasks of the day, maybe a week? And with pandemic, it's, it's so hard to plan, you know, farther than that, you know, when you talk about the year. It's important, though, to have goals, and it's important to look at life from that bigger picture perspective, with a deeper meaning, realizing that this is not the only experience, that there is more to it. And to live that way, loving one another and keeping that ultimate goal of reaching heaven in mind. Let us do it tonight as we celebrate and pray, as we remember, as we honor our loved ones. Let us uh, also look at our lives and remember to love and to keep that goal in front of us. You know, in a church, you know, one of the beautiful symbols is that light of a candle. You know, we light those candles to help us realize that, uh, you know, Jesus is our light. He brightens the world for us. But also, also to remember that just like those flames keep burning, the life of our loved ones continue as well. And so at this point, at this point uh, Father Jay and I will light uh, the candles that are here in those balls, uh, and we will also read the names of people who passed away this last year and were buried here from St. Francis of Assisi Church. You know, we invite those families to come forward when you hear the name of your loved ones to light that candle put it in those uh, sand bowls there, you know, as we present those candles and remind ourselves of their wonderful lives and what they meant to us. We do so as we, again, remember, honor, love, and pray for them. Thomas Babbage, Gregory Bartz, Scott Thomas Becker, Joanne Benneker, George Buckner, Janet Firewalker.
Mario Calzolano, Helen Capriglione, Robert Cervenka, Anthony Corderso, John J. Connors, and John Christian. Elizabeth Divine, Antonio de Gerlando, Janet Gide, Sharon Allen, Sarah Halibert. Baldra Hedrick, Barbara Heidegger, Rita Hoffman, Teresita Holcomb, Lucy Kemis, Ruth Ann Kohler, and Robert Curie. Patrick Lauren, Alfred Lawson, Santo Maltese, Thomas McManman, Thomas Vincent McNulty, and Dennis Miswander.
Susan Elizabeth O'Connor, Charlene Colombo, Sarah Magdalene Pavella, Mary Crenty, Wayne John Rabiega, Francis Salvaggio, Dorothy Snyder. Barbara Summerfield, Elizabeth Stead, Walter Stannis, Kenneth Stannis, Louise Stefanik. Strobel, Ralph Tisson, Tanya Tiscaco, Daniel Tobin, Sister Suzanne Truba, Denise Mkorowitz, Ishmael Valdez, Rosemary Velar Dito, Ronaldo Villasenor, Wisbarski, Cecilia Wolf, Barbara Young, Anthony Sambuto Jr. 
Christine Zwartz. If anyone else would like to come forward and light a candle for our loved one, please do so now. Oh, my God. 
Friends, as we continue with our prayers and celebration today, we present to God our petitions, our intercession. And today, in a special way, we do it as we say this litany of remembrance. I think you all got this wonderful litany, and I invite you to respond to each of those. We remember them, just like you see on this, uh, on this wonderful litany. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and the reburn of spring, we remember them. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them in the rusting of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick, of, sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us, as we remember them. And please be seated as we prepare for the liturgy of the Eucharist.
and pray, sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of you for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. In Him, the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned, that those suddenly by certainty of dying may be consoled by the promise of immortal life. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for us in heaven. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we all acclaim. O Lord, the found of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be proud for you and for many for the forgiveness of our sins. Do this in memory of me. Brothers and sisters, the mystery of our faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, apostles, and all the saints, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Friends, before we share in the Eucharist, we turn to God in a prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. God bless. Peace. Peace with you. Peace. 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 And peace with you. On you stay, we told his head at a Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to dance around my The only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Friends, at this time, I invite you to come forward for the Eucharist uh, to receive communion in three different lines. We have one station through the center, and it's a single line. One station here on the uh, tower side, and one station here on the choir side. We just invite people to take their time. Don't rush it. We want to keep the distance, keep the masks on, receive on the hands so that we can do it with reverence, but also safety. time for remembering, a time to recall the trials and the triumphs, the fears and the falls. There's a time to be grateful for our moments so blessed, the jewels of our memory, where love is our guest. There is gold that is 
Friends, let us pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for this celebration as we remember our loved ones. We ask you, Lord, help all of us to be one day counted among your saints in heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, before our final blessing, before uh, we uh, go in, in peace, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge all those who are helping to make this wonderful celebration possible. There is a, a lot of uh, ministers, musicians who are working uh, hard, preparing for this, uh, you know, uh, making sure that this is a, a prayer for beautiful celebrations. So I just want to thank uh, all of you for, for making it possible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, 
Thank you. And thank you for, for joining us. I know uh, most of you who are present here lost uh, a loved one this last year, and I know it's still, uh, I'm sure, very fresh and, and difficult, but uh, you know, that's one way of, of, of helping each other, supporting each other by being here, praying together, honoring them that way as we remember and continue with our love for them. You know, this is uh, November 2nd as we do that, but uh, you know, in the church we do it throughout this month. Uh, we try to remember our loved ones uh, during the month of November in a special way. That's why, um, you know, for the next few weeks, you know, you have uh, a Pasco candle in the narthex, you know, with a, a beautiful table and a basket uh, right by the candle. And because of the pandemic, we don't have the book to write the name of your loved ones, but we have that basket now. Uh, so, you know, we invite you throughout this month, actually until Thanksgiving, really, uh, to write the name of your loved ones on a piece of paper, and when you, when you come here next time, to drop it in that basket, and we will continue to remember and pray for all our deceased loved, man, loved ones throughout this month. So, so keep that in mind. That's in the narthex by the Pasco candle. As you enter the church, you're going to see it right away. And uh, once again, thank you for coming, praying with us, celebrating as we remember. And have a blessed, blessed evening and week. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shelter of the Lord, abide in His shadow for night. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and He will raise you up on eagles' wings. There you want.